Tunay ng mga namumuno at inalaga ng ating Panginoon. Samahan niyo po kami ngayong linggo upang magkaroon tayo ng refleksyon mula sa salita ng ating Panginoon. At sa pamamagitan ng ating Panginoon, tunay na life is beautiful. Magandang umaga mga kaibigan. Ngayon ipagpatuloy natin ang ating usapin patungkol sa leaders and mentors. Now, tignan natin ang kwento ni Elijah at si Elisha. Elisha was out in the field minding his own business when the man of God came up and threw his cloak over his shoulders. Ano yun? Why did that man uh, threw the, the cloak on his shoulders? Because it was a proposition. It was an invitation. A foretaste of a man who later would invite the fishermen who were also busy ab about their work to come and follow. The field worker asks if he may say his goodbyes, but he does more than that. He burns his equipment, destroying any possibility of returning to the life he once lived. So, Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around, he passed around the meat to the townspeople and they all ate. Then he went to, with Elijah as his assistant. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 21 The story of Elijah and Elisha may be the most obvious mentorship story in the Bible. Bakit po mga kaibigan? Uh, it tells as much about both the role of the protege and the mentor. In his first encounter with Elijah, Elisha is willing to let go of his occupation, his family, and the life he had built thus far in order to follow after a man offering his mentorship. He killed his oxen and destroyed the yoke, giving the proceeds to his neighborhood. This would be the equivalent of selling a business and throwing a party with the proceeds. A protege must be willing to spend time focusing on the assignment of a mentor before qualifying for an assignment of their own. That is the number one thing that a protege must do or a mentee. So, so much can be learned by observing the life of another. We can learn from their habits and disciplines, how they relate to others or even from their faults. Elisha was destined for a double person. But if he had never first offered himself as a servant to Elijah, he would have remained a farmer, never performed amazing miracles that blessed the lives of so many others. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here for the Lord has told me to go to the Jordan River. But again Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives, you yourself and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 6-7 Mga kaibigan, Elisha served Elijah for six years before Elijah was ushered into heaven. At this time, uh, an interesting test was set before Elisha. It was common knowledge among the prophets of the age that, Elisha, uh, that Elijah's time had come. Elijah three times told Elisha to stay behind, but each time his assistant refused to leave his side. Others were watching from a distance. But what did Elijah do? Elijah, uh, sorry, Elisha wanted a close-up and a personal view of what God was about to do in Elijah's life. The, uh, those watching from a distance were not left with the double person, only the one who had persevered. That is Elisha. Number two. 
A prodigy must be willing to stay close to a mentor even when, rema when remaining is difficult. Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 6 At their first encounter, uh, Elijah placed his cloak on Elisha's shoulder. But it wasn't time for him to take up the mantle of the prophet yet. But after Elisha had proven himself faithful as an assistant, Elijah left him his cloak as a symbol that it was now time for the younger man to fulfill the plans God had for, me, for him. Rather than rejoicing that his time had come, Elisha was crushed to see his mentor leave, proving that he wasn't serving Elijah just to propel his own future. After he mourned, he picked up the clock that Elijah had left for him. Number three, a prodigy must wait patiently until the appointed time to pick up the mantle left behind by others. Many times, we are fooled into thinking that it is the job of the mentor to pursue the prodigy. But this biblical account reveals that Elisha's success was found in the prodigy's relentless pursuit of his mentor. Being under the tutelage of another can be difficult. At times, we are asked to, to do hard things. Perhaps our perception of the mentor is challenged when we are introduced to the humanness of someone we greatly respect. Hmm. But the reward is great for those protégés who press beyond these struggles until the day when the baton is clearly passed on to them. My friends, thank you for listening. God bless you. Kita-kita po tayo, bukas. Music